for our devotional thought this evening, I wanted us to look at for just a few moments, verse 10 of Proverbs chapter 21. In our podcast I do on Saturdays and Sundays, I've been working my way through uh, the book of Proverbs, picking out verses that are not really always the common ones we pick out. We commonly talk about the verses like, there's a way that seems right to man, but it's a way of death. We've all talked about that many times before. So I try to pick out verses that we don't commonly talk about all the time. I know when I talk about Psalms, sometimes I try to do the same thing because I know I have in my office a book about the Psalms and it's select verses. And there's numerous books like that. And so I purposely try to pick out some verses that we don't talk about every single time. And Proverbs, Proverbs 21 10 is uh, one of those as well. Where he says, The soul of the wicked desires evil. His neighbor finds no favor in his eyes. And we know that the soul can be a reference to uh, the, the heart of a person. And that's really the way I think about this, is the heart, or you might say the mind, or the mindset of the wicked desires to do evil. You know, there are those who sin and will repent of those things and turn back to God. And there are those who just do evil every day and have no desire to ever obey the gospel, no desire to actually do what is right. And we find here in verse 10, it seems to be that idea of the soul of the, or the heart of the wicked desires evil. So it's not just that they're doing evil, it's that they actually pursue it. If you desire something, you're probably in pursuit of it. If you desire to have a job somewhere, which is pretty, pretty rare right now in our country, but that means you're trying to, you're pursuing it, trying to find something that can fill that spot in your life, right? And so to desire here is that they are pursuing evil. So the heart of the wicked person pursues evil. I don't think that's the wrong way to look at it. Now there's going to be more than one. He goes on to say his neighbor finds no favor in his eyes. You ever met someone that seems like, no matter, every time you talk to them, they're always upset about something. Maybe sometimes that's us and we have to work on that. But sometimes there are those we talk to and they're always upset with someone about something. We find here in verse 10, his neighbor, always just someone who is close to him, he says, finds no favor in his eyes. No favor, no doubt implies that there is zero favor. You know, sometimes we have those in our life who we they do certain things that kind of grind on the nerves, but they have certain positive qualities that they are admirable within them. They're not just people who just you know, have nothing good about them. But in verse 10, it seems as he says here in verse 10, that's not the idea. His neighbor finds no favor, none in his eyes. This means his neighbor could do nothing right. Can you imagine if you replace, if you're in a subdivision, for instance, and you replace your fence, and there's houses beside you, and you put up a nice new fence, and it's straight, it's strong, it's not going to go anywhere. And your neighbor comes over and says, I really wish you'd stick that other color. How would that make you feel? Probably not very happy. You probably feel like this person here, he can find no favor in his eyes. This person has gone through the expense and the time to do those things, and it's just not good enough. We look here in verse 10, who these qualities are applied to. He says it's the soul or the, or the heart of the wicked. We do not want to be like the wicked. The wicked many times can be applied to the non-Christian, but sometimes we're not careful. We can be those who fall away from the truth and start behaving like them as well. But we don't want to be like them. We don't want to be the person who desires or pursues evil. And we don't want to be the person who is so bitter that those around us can do nothing right at all. And sometimes in our life, because of the stress in our lives, we feel like we may find ourselves Maybe at least in that latter part of the verse, feeling like no one can do anything right. Everything or what someone does rides on us, right? But that's something we have to work at because the world, more times than not, is behaving exactly that way. We are called to be to not be like the world, right? So we don't want to act like them. We don't want to sound like them. We don't want to appear like them in the way that we go about our lives. And so we want to avoid all that. And the way we can do that, we find here in verse 10, just by doing the exact opposite of what we find the wicked soul doing. We don't want to desire or pursue evil. 
And we want to find the good, at least some good, in everybody that we come in contact with. There are those around us who are not perfect individuals. We're talking about in the congregation or in the community at large or in the brotherhood at large. But I think most times, if you look hard enough, you'll find they have some good qualities about them. It doesn't mean that that causes us to, to, to overlook any sins that we commit or anything like that. That's what we're talking about. Is that we have to work very hard, and I do too at times, to find the good in those around us. Because we have to think, do we want them to do the same thing for us? To find the good in us? Because I'm sure we can all promise and admit there are those who, I mean, maybe we're not their, their ideal person that's been they with, right? But we always be those who are looking for the good in others, and those who are not desiring or pursuing evil. So that's the thought I want us to consider this evening. If you need to ask for words of encouragement, you need to ask for prayers on your behalf for sin, uh, we can help you or encourage you in any way we'd be glad to do so. That's going to be Sam singing the song that's been selected. 